Welcome back, handsome viewers. This is the last sort of topic I wanted to touch on from a citizen con point of view. Uh, no camera today. I'm back in what I'm calling the garden shed. For those of you who don't know, I recently moved to a whole new country and we'll be only moving into our own place at the end of this month. So wish us luck. But anyway, we're going to break down the PvP endgame stuff that we saw at citizen con. Uh, I'll try to explain how the whole soft infrastructure system is intended to work. The seal planetary shield token system. And uh, yeah, for those who don't know, this is how CIG have described what large-scale org versus org endgame content will look like in our ludicrous space game. But before we begin, I do want to make it clear that this stuff is probably a ways away. Don't expect it anytime soon. They said 12 to 18 months. I would assume longer than that. A lot of this might change. Um, it might look or play exactly like this in the future. Um, what could be completely different? Only time will tell. So let's break it down. So you're basically going to have PvP systems or low sec systems. These for 1.0 are going to be Pyro or Nyx. The high sec systems in 1.0 are intended to be Castra, Terra, and the one we all know and love, Stanton. The high resources of these low sex systems are supposed to be the incentive for players to, you know, want to go there, build their bases, and create all this wonderful stuff that they demonstrated over, over Citizen Con. If the incentive works, right, then you have all of these orgs that are going to be, you know, competing to exploit the resources of the system because these are supposedly higher value resources than your, your high sec places, right? So essentially, there's this abandoned system wide planetary shield network left by a company called SEAL. This network consists of ground bases, orbital shield stations, and then interplanetary shield relays, and then one shield core. The shield network needs to be powered by resources to work, and adding resources to the network is what actually affords you the org tokens. Now, what are org tokens? This is something that orgs will bid on, sounding like, you know, a week to week basis. Whichever org bids the most, what, what do these numbers look like? We don't know. Is it five? Is it 10? Is it 100? The highest bidding orgs will receive invulnerability for all of their structures placed throughout the system, including space stations. So a practical example of gaining tokens would be attacking a ground base with your org, you know, one of these shield ground bases, taking it over and then depositing the resources to generate the tokens, right? So this act of gaining tokens will start at seal ground bases, then transition over to orbital shield stations, then move over to shield relays and then end at the shield core. It sounds like there will be some kind of weekly timer because after a while, probably after a battle that decides ownership at the shield core, you know, the, the ultimate climactic battle that decides, you know, who, who gets that big bonus juicy seal technology at the end will then allow you to bid the tokens that you've generated and the highest bid by the orgs with the most tokens will gain the invulnerability for the following week. If players are incentivized enough and invulnerability makes sense, which I mean, God, sounds like it will, then the combat taking place at SEAL ground stations, SEAL orbital stations, SEAL space relays, and the SEAL shield core could be the meat of most of the org versus org gameplay that they want to put through into the game. The idea being that anytime you log in, you can contribute to the cause and get your PvP action on. So yeah, I mean, theoretically, this all sounds great. This is essentially the soft infrastructure that they want to govern open world large scale PvP in Star Citizen. So that's how that all works. And my sort of first thought thoughts and opinions after you know really digesting and chewing on this for a bit is is this practical are the incentives correct and can they balance it all out so that it works the way that they want it to work and ultimately i think the most important thing is for all of us will this be fun right here's my thinking it sounds like a percentage of the resources that you spend your time gathering, you know, that could go to your tier five Bengal carrier or your tier five Idris, you know, these resources sound like they're going to become incredibly important because um, there's a lot of choice to make in what you actually want to craft and what you want to upgrade and, you know, from components to the knife that you have on your hip, you know, all the stuff, there's, there's like a lot of range in what we're going to be spending resources on. So a percentage of those hard earned resources need to go into the seal shield network in the first place. Place to even gain that invulnerability. So it really depends on what that ratio is, right? If the number's too high, why not just stay in high sex space to build safely? And if you really want to get that, you know, injection of resources, could we see players, you know, forming these massive expeditions off to Pyro with their Orions and Hull E's and, you know, whatever industry ships and basically go and exploit Pyro and then head back through the, the jump point and go build in safety, right? Hopefully that's its own, you know, form of gameplay loop. Hopefully the system is, you know, flexible enough that that is 
viable. Hopefully that's just another strategy that an org can use. Maybe it'll it'll make more sense depending on the size of your org. We just don't know. You know, you're gonna have to travel through jump points. Maybe that's gonna have its whole own issue, you know, once we actually start seeing how jump points work. And I don't just mean practically how they work, but what is the meta game that revolves around piracy and traders heading through jump points, right? It, it becomes very exciting to even consider the possibilities there. And then this is also where sort of balance starts to come into play again is what's more effective a base on the ground extracting a certain resource or an orion off mining at an asteroid right do we do we start seeing because because we do know that bases can dry up eventually and that obviously makes the orion far more practical than a base that has to be rebuilt over other resources but it becomes very interesting to see like oh cool i've got this base busy generating this resource i don't feel the need or you know practically speaking we don't need to take the orion out and and go and you know go on a massive mining endeavor anytime soon you know hopefully these are decisions that are deep enough for the average org leader to to sort of dictate and say cool orion's less of a priority right now let's go do xyz while our base is you know passively extracting all this other stuff it becomes very cool ultimately you know players are going to want to take the path of least resistance with the way things work out hopefully a huge part of the fun of this game is that that's what orgs are going to figure out what is our most effective way to go about building and accomplishing the things we want to build and accomplish hopefully this is going to you know take place through lots of trial and error and it's not going to become too obvious on the onset of a 1.0 version of the game you know like what is the best use for a thousand players um you can imagine top orgs competing for you know the world first built, you know player built space station um in a low sex system or the world first tier 5 bengal carrier with the most tier 5 com you know tier 5 components you know the, the, the perfectly crafted bengal carrier um but in star citizen's development history just saying these words actually kind of sounds a bit insane right if you have a thousand player org are your efforts 100 best spent in pyro building your bengal and dealing with all the pvp and soft infrastructure of seal or will bringing resources in from other systems to your safe high sec home system be better or perhaps slower but safer right there's all this balance that we sort of need to consider as for will it be fun i think so right i mean just playing the game now without all of this crazy infrastructure progression i've had a pretty good time when it works so you know the next year or two for star citizen is apparently and seeming to be very exciting obviously we need to relate this to how other sandbox-esque mmos have sort of evolved in the past right um i come from a lot of wow experience and that was obviously very theme park very you know my experience in wow was very much burning crusade through wrath of the lich king pve focus stuff i didn't really enjoy pvp combat in that type of game right um the way that i see the the actual experience of this panning out if and when we get there is more like a planet side 2 or like a, a ultra large scope battlefield right your physical actions are determining a lot more than your character stats right so the, this idea that you're just a cog in the machine but hopefully with you know high risk actions you can make a huge difference in an org versus org war you know boarding their idris you know assaulting the bridge at a pivotal moment during a fleet battle or something um these are all you know things that, that remain to be seen the idea that they actually did speak about base raiding being a, a form of gameplay right there's still a lot of unknowns here um bases will have these plan you know localized planetary shields not the not the system-wide planetary shield tech that we've already discussed but having these localized shields around ground bases that that negate an a2's ability to destroy it from above and implying you know they actually said you need to send in ground forces first to disable these shields and you know using explosive charges and hacking gameplay to get through this stuff i mean it, it all sounds incredible it sounds very well thought out but how is this practically going to take place and then are we not going to be able to assault high sec bases at all will they have 100 percent shield coverage all the time making any bases ground or space in high sec completely invulnerable right can we even build space stations in high sec space because the way that the presentation sort of lent you know transitioned or segued into space station talks was off the back of the pvp open world org versus org gameplay you know they he literally said what is the thing that you want to protect the most and then they entered the entire panel about space stations so let me know down in the comments have they clarified if you can in fact build a space station in high six space in the first place right if if that's the case then no need to talk about incentive anymore players are going to want to build their own space stations right and if you can only do that in low sec awesome the other thing that this made me sort of consider is with the soft infrastructure with the seal shield planetary taking place 
it feels like that player built bases in ground or space aren't going to be the most hidden things in the world that that we're just going to kind of know the positions of people's bases or you know is there going to be a massive difference ver, you know versus a small base versus a, a, a huge base that's extracting tons and tons of resources is it just going to be a discoverability thing do we need to get out into you know exploration ships with really powerful radars which apparently works in the game right now to, um, different different exploration ships have more powerful radars to detect things further away and we actually have to find player bases before we can even you know attack them or raid them or that type of stuff so again this this all ties very deeply down and and, and it, it starts to form a very nice package on, on what the end game pvp situation on a large scale could look like for star citizen yeah so there's a lot of questions things are looking very cool i'm super excited for all this stuff i you know i i can temper my expectations with you know this is going to take a while we're probably another you know year or two three off um Tell me when you think we'll be running around the very first player built space stations. It's not going to be tomorrow. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.